Beyond Banking. What happens when we merge artificial intuition with DLT? Self-correcting, blockchain-based and scalable AI can solve issues relating to banking and custodianship, among other things. Let's dig in. Alex Alexandrov. Coin Payments. Velas is a blockchain platform for secure, interoperable and extremely scalable transactions. Velas is a virtual expanding learning autonomous system powered by swarms of single-cell artificial intuition specimens, continuously powering the blockchain consensus and electing appropriate delegated proof of stake nodes based on what's best for the network. Velas Artificial Intelligence elects block producers based on performance, dependability, and amount staked, while also optimizing network parameters such as block production speed, allowing the network to automatically slow down or accelerate, making it capable of processing up to 30,000 transactions per second. Artificial intelligence on the Velas platform also reduces the cost of consensus, motivating participants of the network to be reliably present and active in the network, maximizing relevant scores and rewards, while also optimizing network parameters, resulting in an enhanced network without issues, such as the 51% attack and nothing at stake problem. To explore all the features and learn how Velas uses neural networks to determine node score rating, block producers, and much more, Check Velas.com. All right. Uh, There's a little intro video for our new project that's coming out. Um, those who don't know me, I'm founder and CEO of coinpayments.com, uh, .net, .info, and all the other subdomains. And um, we've been working on this for quite some time. We launched a CPS token about a year ago to fund this project, and this is the main net. The main net that stands for Virtual Expanding Learning Autonomous System. This is the... Uh, kind of the marriage between artificial intuition and the blockchain that I've never seen happen before, and we're really excited to bring that to the world. Uh, let me jump into the details of why this is awesome and what it's going to do for the world and for community and as a whole. So one of the biggest blockchain problems is, you know, most of the blockchains, as the speakers before me have mentioned, are not really decentralized to a certain degree. And what Velas allows us to do is using the AI swarms or you know, basically uh, internal artificial intuition, select the correct nodes for the network, which fixes a lot of problems that even you know, blockchains like as sexy as they are like EOS can't solve because they have to vote for people to be become the block producers. And if they um, don't provide the right hardware, but somehow they still have populism and, and people are still voting for them, or they have a lot of tokens of their own, which they are able to vote for themselves, it creates a cost issue for the end user to buy the resources on the network. And it still, to some degree, leads to centralization because there's only 21 block producers that are statically coded in the blockchain. The way we fix this problem is uh, we basically give artificial intuition swarms the decision making to pick what is always best for the network. So it, it actually makes decisions based on multiple factors, which are uh, consistent of how much coin they stake in their wallet, what is their reputation given to them by the AI, uh, what is their uptime, and what is the computation power they provide to the network, and also where geographically they are at the time when the network needs it. So see, Velas is not a typical blockchain that's been out there before. This is definitely, I would call it a 3.0 blockchain because it doesn't run at full speed all the time. So the traditional blockchains have a huge problem. They get so big over time. Like if anybody tried to install a node of Ethereum lately, it's essentially you know, over a terabyte in space. And it has a lot of issues when you have to set it up and run it as an operator. Uh, we at Coin Payments, you know, we support about 1,300 coins uh, for the backend services for our users to be able to store and receive payments and yada, yada. Um, we run into a lot of problems running these nodes, um, which led us to kind of think, well, what if we had a unifying blockchain that allows to containerize all the coins in the system into one coherent ecosystem that allows you to basically store Ethereum, EOS, and everything else, like Ripple, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and what, what you have it, including ERC-20s. 
And now something like that didn't exist. And as I was talking earlier in the panel for whoever was still here, um, I believe the future of money is, is a single ecosystem when everything can coexist. In order for that to work and not to become extremely huge in size, there's, uh, you know, the two approaches to that is using a torrent protocol for decentralizing the blockchain requirements for the nodes itself, which I'm not going to get into right now. But the other one is to make sure the blockchain doesn't run at full speed all the time. Uh, all the blockchains right now, the moment they're launched, they're running at full capacity, like they're producing blocks as intended because it's code. However, our blockchain has the ability to, you know, select the speed that is required based on the need on the network because the AI is constantly analyzing all the activity on the blockchain. It doesn't necessarily know what you're doing. It doesn't really care. It doesn't take that into consideration. All it does, it sees its purpose in life is to optimize and enhance the network that it lives in. So by doing that, it can control block speed from two seconds to two minutes and slow down and accelerate based on the need, which reduces drastically the size of the blockchain. Beyond that, it can actually uh, start at the, as little as two kilobytes per block and go to one megabyte, which gives it huge, I mean, I kind of call it like a slinky blockchain. It, it's able to expand and contract whatever is necessary, which is something I've never seen in any blockchain before. And I think that will allow tremendous scalability. And at the early stages, it's not going to become really huge and bloated in size, which will lead to a lot more adoption and a lot more containerization of other coins to come on this network. Um, what is do, what is Velas is better than others? So, like I said, artificial intuition based delegated proof of stake concept is something that's completely new. It's never been tried before. Uh, this allows the network to pick the block producers. So if you even have 80% of all the coins supply, somehow you got all that money and you're able to sit with that. You can't control the network. You can't take over. You'll maybe just get one node, but at that time as well, it would matter what kind of computer hardware you give into the network. So you would have to convince the network itself to pick you. It's going to be a relationship between you and the network. What that solves is one of the issues that I've seen in network is a lot of block producers that are elected, they kind of sit on their ass and they don't do anything anymore. Or, you know, miners buy a bunch of gear, they make a bunch of money, and they don't really do anything except for upgrading the hardware. Our network forces our block producers to go out there and make sure people are using the network. Otherwise, it will scale right back down the reward because it will basically shrink the demand curve and it will uh, basically slow down the block production and it will reduce the reward. The AI actually is able to also um, is also able to control the reward per year. So it goes from 2% to 8% and reward ratio to incentivize uh, users on the network when it feels it is necessary. So it actually is able to make those decisions uh, on the fly as the network grows. One little thing I want to show you is uh, this is, uh, was done by Harvard Medical School. And it kind of illustrates how the single cell organisms that don't have parents to teach them how to behave, because single cell organisms are born and they kind of know how to do stuff. And that is where the intuition comes in. So we're trying to mimic nature in that sense. This is, the, this is basically a Petri dish with antibiotics uh, going at strength from 0 to 1 to 10 to 100. So basically it increased by multiples of 10. And then the bacteria is released, moving towards the center. They don't know how to do it, but they evolve their functions. And as soon as you see one breakthrough, their, their DNA is passed down to the other ones there. And slowly but surely, they start to pill up the petri dish, penetrating the antibiotics that are laid out there. Now, nobody taught them how to do that. The way they can do that is because they, you know, they're living organisms that develop new receptacles, and they evolve and mutate. And if just a few of them mutated and able to do that, they pass down the genetic code to the other ones. So, a silos in the DNA swarms of artificial intuitions that we've created mimics the exact same protocol. So what it does is we let them run. We don't really, we encourage them to analyze all the specifics. And then we basically let them mutate and adapt to the network conditions. I'm out of time. I'm sorry. I can continue for hours about this. But um, yeah, so I'm not going to get into sales stuff right now. If you want to talk to me, but if you're interested in the coin, come talk to me. Uh, I'll be here. Thanks, everybody.